iPad OS 26.1 is here and with it returns slide over. That's right. That one feature that we've all been hoping that Apple brings back has been brought back. And we're going to talk about how to enable that on your iPad once you have iOS 26.1 installed. So as normal, you can open up apps and you can slide over right over top of them. All you have to do to turn an app into slide over is get to where you can see these three dots. Once you have that, you tap and hold, and then you have the option to enter slide over. Once it's entered in there, now I can just swipe it across, swipe it back. Now this works differently than how slide over worked in the past because you cannot have multiple slide over apps. So it's not perfect, but it's so much better than what we had in iPad OS 26 because we didn't have it at all. So far in my tests, it's been working really, really well. Now, normally I would use slide over for messages, but I don't wanna share what text messages I have in there right now. So we're just gonna keep using just Safari as a default, but it works so good. So even if you have multiple apps open, so let's go ahead and open up the Bible app. Maybe I want to shrink that down, push it over on one side. Let's just go ahead and say, no, that's not nice. Why did I say, I said, I didn't like, I didn't mean it. I promise. I like the Bible. I did not mean to say no. I wasn't thinking. I can't believe I just did that. Um, we're going to say no thanks right now. Once again, I love your, I love the Bible. And then we're going to go ahead and open up chat GPT. We're going to get this one down, push it. Oh, here we go. Push it. Come on. Let's try it one more time. Slide it. Why does it want to work? Let's try it. Ugh, there we go. Whew. That was a lot of work, man. All right. Now we still have slide over right over top of them. And of course, if I flip it around, it still works the same. Obviously they've lost. Let's, holy cow, come on. There we go. So we still have that ability. Slide over is working great. But now if we go inside the settings app, we go to about, just so you know which build number this is, this is 23B85. So this was the final release of iPad OS 26.1. So it did come in at a pretty large file size. If I open up the photos app, I can get that to you. So right here you can see it came in at 7.99 gigabytes for me. Now other people said that they saw it as high as 10. So just keep that in mind. It is a large update and it took a little bit to update as well, but it is something that you can run overnight. So let's go ahead and close that out. But back inside the settings app, if we go in here and we scroll down to multitasking and gestures, I feel like all this is new. I did not see this before at least. You do have the option to revert back more to what it was like before. So you can go back to full screen apps. You don't have to have the windowed apps. We also have the four to five finger swipe that returned, I believe. I can't remember if that returned at 26 or during one of the betas, but we do have that as well. And, but the problem is if you do this method, slide over disappears. So uh, as far as I understand, yeah, I can't get, let's go back to the Bible, the app that I absolutely love and it's really awesome. Once again, obviously with this windowed view, I cannot just like go into any way that I can figure out how to get slide over to work. In the past, the way it would work is you just grab the icon and you bring it over. And when you're over at the side, it would actually just pop over slide over. So in this mode, you cannot use slide over. You have to use the windowed apps to actually get the slide over to work. So there's a lot of other options in here in case you want to have something in there. So just keep that in mind. If you want to customize your iPad in multiple different ways, this is the place to do it in. But getting out of here, we're gonna go back into portrait mode and we're gonna go into display and brightness and liquid glass. So we now have an option in here to go from clear to tinted. This is a very minor change. So if I go in here, you can see this right here is the notifications when they're tinted. And then if I close this out and I go back to clear, come back in, this is the clear. So it's a little bit easier to read. Of course, this is very minimal. This doesn't really affect your icons at all. That is still done by going into edit, 
customize, and then you have clear here as well. Now this tinted option is different. Like I had somebody, when I talked about iPhone OS, talk about, well, don't we already have that control in? This is only for the icons, and this tinted is basically just setting a color more so than just adding like a little bit more frostedness to the glass. So that's just something in case you've seen that before and you're like, we've already had access to that. This is something different. TV app did get an update. If you take a look at it, let me just zoom in. So if you look at the TV app icon, it's got a little bit more color to it, which is kind of cool. So they did update that as well. And let's zoom back out. Apologize for the shaking when that happens. But if we open up the TV app, this is where I usually show on the iPhone how the tinted works. So you can see up here, it's mainly with the controls themselves. You can see right there, if I go back to clear and I come back, it's just more see-through. And it's, it's very minimal. And I really wish Apple would give us so much more control over this. I would love sliders for every section. Give me a slider for the notification, like, cause I want that to be more frosted. Give me a slider for the icons because I would love that to be as clear as it was in the first betas of iOS 26 and iPad OS 26. The clearness of those looked amazing. And the same thing goes for these menu systems. Give me a slider to detect how clear or how how frosted I want them to be. And you can have the all right here. You have a whole section for this. Just give us more options right in here with sliders instead of this and still have that preview to just see how clear or how tinted it is. That is the OS that I want. I hope Apple does it. I don't know if they will, but that would make this so, so much better. Moving on to Apple Music. So if we go in here, we close that out. I'm gonna turn the volume down here, make sure. So you have the mini player right here. It stays there no matter where, what screen you're on. And But now you have the ability to just swipe to go to the next track. So you can swipe that way or swipe this way to go back. So this is really nice to have. Let me just zoom in one more time for this one right in here. So now if you notice, I can swipe and then swipe to go back. So really cool, I love that. It's just something nice that they've added. It's just that little animation and the way they did this to make it really cool. And of course you can tap to go to the full viewer and in here you can go back and forth as well. So nice little update to the music app in iPadOS and iOS 26.1. Also, if you lock your screen and you have the camera, you can swipe over to access your camera Apple added a new control in iOS 26.1 to actually stop this. So if I unlock my iPad, we go back into settings. This time we're gonna just search for camera, get into the camera controls, and in here you have the option to lock screen, swipe to open camera. So if I turn this off and now I go to my lock screen, now if I swipe, the camera's not gonna open at all. A nice little feature, if you're somebody that accidentally swipes and opens the camera all the time, especially on the new iPhones, you've got the camera capture button, you've got the camera button on there, and of course the camera icon. There's all these different ways to access the camera. And I love that Apple's actually just thinking through and allowing us to turn things off that you may not even use or even want on your device. Apple also updated Apple Intelligence to support other languages. They also added the beta tag back on the icon because obviously this is still beta. Apple still has a long way to go to get Apple Intelligence up to par. But if we go into languages, we have a full list in here. Um, the new ones are Danish, Dutch, I think it's the Dutch Netherlands. It might be both of them, I can't remember. I know there's a Chinese traditional, I'm not sure which one that is up here, but then there's also Turkish, Norwegian, the Portugal, Portuguese is a new one, and Vietnamese is also new at the bottom. They continue improving Apple intelligence one way or another, of course, we want it to do a lot more than what it currently does. So Apple, please continue to work on that and make this amazing. Apple also added this other option in the settings app for local capture. 
I believe we go to general and it's in here. So there's local capture, you can do audio only, and you can actually save where these are downloaded. So basically it says add local capture to the control center to record your own audio and video during a call to save and edit later. So the way that works, I'm guessing you just come in here and we add a control, type in local capture. There it is. So now when we do a recording or whatever, we can actually start a recording, record our own audio or even video if you don't do the audio only. And you can actually set where that saves to in the files app. So by default, it is in the downloads folder. So nothing actually saved because I didn't actually make a call, but you have that ability now. And as far as I understand, I haven't done a test yet. I probably should have, but it just records your side. It doesn't record everybody else's side. At least that's what it sounds like from the settings when it says your own audio and video during a call. Very interesting. I'm not sure who really needs to do that, but they give you that option if you want it. In the Photos app, we have a little bit of an update here with the scrubber right here. So as you scrub, you actually see the time. It's just a little bit of an updated design here, which is just really nice. So I'm a big fan of this little tiny update, but the same goes for if you tap and hold, they move the delete button up to the top because that's probably something that a lot of people do. I know I use it all the time. So just giving you that option to quickly delete pictures or videos, whatever you want from your photo library is a great option. But overall, the stability and everything also seems to be working out really well. Everything seems to be nice and fluid, I'm not really having any issues so far during the betas or in the final release. So if you are running iPadOS 26, I highly recommend you get 26.1. It is a great update. And if you're interested in iOS 26.1 or watchOS 26.1, I have both of those videos right here for you. And I really do love the Bible app. I'm gonna fix that no and leave it an updated five-star rating. Thank you and God bless.